but we are super excited to have everybody on today. Just as a way of, of brief introductions as people continue to stream in here, welcome everybody. Um, we have Christina from Yelp and Dan from Yelp also with us today. Mike Gaitis is, is here with us from DSG uh, from the agency perspective to kind of share with us uh, what customers are, are thinking and experiencing. And my name is Kevin, I'll be your host today. And uh, as we like to say, please keep your hands and arms inside the ride at all times. We don't want any injuries on a webinar. It would be hard to do, but uh, there's a first for everything, right? So for those of you who are watching this live, uh, we do have a Q&A section. So if you do have questions throughout, feel free to just go ahead and jump in there, type up your question and we'll, we'll do our best to grab that and answer those as, uh, as they come in and um, address them with you. So we'll go ahead and kick it off and get started. So today, the nuts and bolts series, what we put together is, you know, we all can't be experts on everything, um, even though we like to tell ourselves that sometimes. But the, the idea of the nuts and bolts is TapClicks works with so many different partners and have experience with so many different, um, different technologies out there and different sources for inventory and for conversions. And we really wanted to bring this to you in the tactical way of showing you guys uh, how best to leverage some of the partners that we have on our platform and what they can mean to your business and to your customers and how that can impact you in a very positive way. So that's what Nuts and Bolts series is all about. Today, we're really digging in and rolling up our sleeves, talking about small businesses, small business ad strategies. And that is one of the reasons why we have Yelp here with us today because they're kind of uh, uh, synonymous with that small business space. As we know, the, the world has changed significantly and, and the pandemic has caused all of small businesses to reevaluate what they're doing in terms of advertising, how they market themselves to the public, you know, what they're looking for and, and kind of how to do it, everything that they have done in the past in new ways. We've seen so many different strategies and, and things out there. So as we begin to build into this, what we want to start off with is just kind of some of the strategy and um, some of the discussion around how are small businesses adapting to this new environment? You know, what are they looking at? What are some of the the tools and tips and tricks. Before we get into that, if you guys are with me, if you're all excited and pumped up, all ready to go, jump into the Q&A section. I'd love to hear what small business you are most excited about reopening and, and going and visiting. Could be uh, you know, theaters, it could be <laughs> your local bar, but jump in, there, share with us what uh, small business you are most excited about visiting and uh, participating with as everything reopens here as we come into the spring. Um, maybe it's, uh, it's something different, but do share with us have on that. I'd love to hear from you guys and understand what you're doing with that. Um, oh, we got a great one. Escape rooms. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is definitely something fun and exciting. We're, I actually heard of a group that's doing virtual escape rooms. I don't know exactly how that works uh, because part of it is, you know, the, the chaos of being all confined in a, in a single room, but they're trying to be very creative and and come up with things. So um, escape rooms is a fun thing. I know a lot of people are super excited about concerts reopening again, uh, bars reopening again. I think everyone needs a, a little bit of uh, liquid therapy as we get through some of this stuff. Thank you for your feedback on that. Local is awesome, right? We love our local communities. And that's one thing that everybody talks about in their cities. Oh, you got to go visit this local area or that local area or this cultural area. But how do we really, you know, how do businesses in those areas you know, expand their visibility? And what are the trends that we're seeing? And that's really where we want to start off with. So Christina, you know, Yelp is, is so tied in with the local businesses. What are some of the trends that you guys are seeing in terms of advertising and strategies just within the local areas? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say this past year, generally, it's been so interesting to see the, the search and the advertising trends on Yelp, which essentially go hand in hand in a lot of ways. So if you take the experience of this pandemic, right, it was first announced, stay at home orders were put in place. And I think what we saw was kind of like a massive kind of fight or flight response at first, because everyone was just trying to figure out like what's going on, trying to figure out our bearings. And we saw like that reflected on the platform, just everything was kind of put on a big pause. Um, but then pretty quickly, what, we, what we've seen because Yelp is such a trusted platform for you know, reliable, authentic content, first started seeing users 
return because they just wanted to find out information. You know, they wanted to find out what was still open, you know, what was different that was being offered in this new climate. Uh, how could they still support their favorite local businesses and help them survive during, you know, what was understandably a very challenging time. Um, and we started seeing, you know, again, still on the user side, just using Yelp to spread the word. So by even just a few months in after March, we were already seeing triple digit, sometimes even quadruple digit percent increases in wow. review mentions of things like contact lists and curbside and temperature checks, you know, these phrases that a year ago, no one was thinking about, but now are part of our everyday language, right? Right. Um, so people were just using the platform to kind of share with their peers in their community. And then on the flip side, again, it goes hand in hand with local businesses after that first kind of initial panicked reaction, um, they were able to see these shifts in consumer behavior on the platform and adapt to accommodate them. So um, even though the immediate change, of course, were we saw, you know, sadly, hundreds of thousands of businesses marking themselves as closed on Yelp, um, by June, that number had already decreased. The, the closings had decreased as businesses reopened, of course, with modifications. Um, and then, you know, going into the end of the year, we were seeing even new business openings on Yelp recover and get back to pre-pandemic levels. Um, so it's been really interesting. I think it's all a matter of like seeing those shifts in consumer behavior, being able to adapt. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting was, you know, home and local service businesses especially have been really resilient during this time. Mm. Um, you know, relatively fewer closures than other categories, even more new openings by the end of the year than, you know, restaurants and food, uh, which definitely makes sense. I mean, again, you kind of read the tea leaves. Consumers are at home all the time. They're trying to set up their work from home space. And they're like, you know, I got this time and I don't like the way my kitchen looks like. <laughs> might as well get a contractor in here and do some renovations. So, um, you know, obviously we love seeing uh, businesses of all kinds find ways to succeed, but it was definitely a bright spot kind of seeing, you know, service-based businesses especially come to the forefront and move in a more positive direction as well. And that is really encouraging as we start to look at this. Uh, Mike, from an agency perspective, right, we, we all had to look at this and respond very quickly, throw away the old playbook, write a brand new playbook, throw that one away and write another one. You know, it's, it's this constant adjust and shift. What are some of the trends that you're seeing with, you know, with brands, with clients um, from an agency perspective um, in this kind of new, new normal that we're in? Sure. And, and Christina was, was absolutely dead on. And, and I kind of want to start where, where she was initially getting, I was this fight or flight thing in 2020. You know, we did see, the same kind of booms in home services. I think that would caught us by surprise, a lot of us and a lot of agencies and uh, maybe some participants in the webinar. You probably found the same thing. A lot of people are at home, a lot of people are doing things, a lot of people were confronted with, with their home issues, right? Um, in, you know, on the other spectrum, on the other side of that spectrum, there is uh, hesitancy, you know, on, on businesses like restaurants, businesses for obvious reasons. Um, maybe a small medical practice or something like that. So um, as we're getting into the, you know, everybody's catching up on vaccinations, this idea of, of herd immunity, you know, out of our, our current state, we're seeing a new type of hesitancy. And I, I, I found it kind of interesting. And it's, it's, again, as a result of all this great, great business that, uh, that some people have been able to capitalize on. And that that hesitancy is, is in maybe staffing shortages, maybe supply shortages. So it's really forced uh, our clients, you know, to take a look and say, hey, do I have the, the capacity, which I think is really important, and it's really important for an agency to ask that question. Do I have the capacity to push it forward? Do I have the capacity to, uh, you know, to continue to advertise and then fulfill what I'm advertising? Um, and then that leads into the next kind of question that, that we're getting into with our clients, which is how are we spending ad dollars? Can we spend smarter, right? Yeah. Um, I think one of the benefits of, of working with a partner like Yelp um, and, and obviously what, what tap clicks can bring as well, uh, we're able to kind of look in and see the great data they're keeping. We're understanding what the consumers are doing on the platform. So uh, that kind of leads us to it as an agency to the question with our clients, are you spending smart dollars? Can you be, you know, moving things around or what, what type of traffic are you getting? What type of, uh, 
leads are coming through. Uh, and, and it's a really good conversation because at the end of the day, I think the, the, the marketer that's going uh, forward, um, making an attempt to, to kind of continue business, continue driving that business, they're obviously going to come out on top. And that's, that's a really good trend that we're seeing. Are you seeing um, more interest on brands uh, kind of retrenching in SEO as a foundational piece, um, you know, augmenting advertising with SEO? Is, is, are any of those discussions kind of percolating to the top now? Absolutely. And I think for a lot of businesses, Kevin, where we are, um, they just want to understand what, what the current organic traffic is. So that's mm -hmm. kind of step one. What are we getting, right? Are, are we, is this enough to sustain me? Is this enough to push me forward? Um, and it's, it's kind of pulling back that mystery. And it's a good conversation to have. You know, a lot of them will have a website. A lot of them will be working on it. A lot of people who have committed to SEO in the past may not saw the results or, or um, you know, what, what they wanted to see quickly enough. And, and this is a good time to kind of revisit that. But um, as I found, it's, it's kind of step one, it's that re-education piece. What, what is the traffic actually doing? What are, you know, all of your channels doing really? Right. Um, Kevin, just one, one more point I wanted to add, and this is, I think probably uh, something Christina, Dan, you guys have, and, and obviously on the Tapley side, uh, have experienced, but there's been a ton of talk about digital transformation whether it's on LinkedIn articles, whether it's on studies being done, I think everybody on some level has been forced to, to you know, wrestle with that fat fact that the digital transformation of any business has been sped up in, in you know, Zoom calls, in um, being able to communicate things to, to customers before they, um, you know, get to your, your location because of restrictions. So it, it's really, um, those are conversations we've been having a lot. People are really willing to revisit everything about their, their business practice. And um, it's a really good time to, to jump in and, and as there's a ton of information and great tools, so. Uh, that's great. And that's a perfect segue to our next kind of topic is um, you know, Yelp uh, really leads with local, as I mentioned, the SEO stuff. You know, we, we always fight against SEO and keywords and, and making sure organic ranking is there, but so much of uh, what Yelp does feeds right into the SEO piece, right? Because of the experience that they have. Uh, it's not just the reviews that come through, but now we're looking at making sure that all the right information about the local business, the small business is you know, updated. It, you talk about digital transformation, right? Where, where better to start than with Yelp, because that's one of the first things that people see when they're searching for your business, right? Are the hours of operation updated? That's, that's an easy one, right? Is there a phone number that they can reach you at? Is the website's link proper on there? All these kind of basic things allow us just to kind of reset. Okay, where, where are we? Is this stuff right? Is it updated? Can it provide more better information to our customers? not only through our own website, but through the Yelp listing as well, because people find it in a number of different ways. Um, the other interesting piece that Christina was bringing up about Yelp is <clears throat> the intent part of it, right? So SEO, we think about people researching and doing different things, but it's actually really, you know, right in front of somebody actually making a purchasing decision so it's high on the intent scale as well. So that's one of the reasons why we brought them in today because high intent builds to high conversions um, and making sure that you have the right data in Yelp in the first place for your business then sets you up for more success as you start to look to build campaigns through that. Christina, can you give us uh, you know, just a, a kind of the sales pitch a little bit more on Yelp and, and talking more about the, the intent side, conversion side, some of those other pieces that Yelp has put into place to really help customers, you know, in, in kind of this pandemic environment. Definitely. I mean, I think you, you called it out um, correctly. Like the most important thing to consider with the Yelp audience is both its skill and its intent. Um, so like, even now we, we still get over 50 million unique visitors to the platform every month. Um, and they're searching for every type of business. I know mm. a lot of people, you know, they think of Yelp, they think of restaurants, but 
professional services, automotive services, beauty, home improvement, all those things get searched, um, you know, widely on the platform. Um, and then if, if you think about just like even, you know, us as users, when you go to Yelp, everyone's coming with some sort of need. So they need someone to help them with their taxes. They need someone to fix their heating. Um, and they like have the money in hand to address that need, but they often just don't know who to spend it with. So um, one trend that we've seen consistently on the platform are that most searches on Yelp are unbranded. So, you know, most people aren't going on Yelp <clears throat> and searching for, you know, Kevin's lawn mowing company. They're just searching for lawn mowing, right? Um, and that's something that's really important to keep in mind that that is your opportunity to stay top of mind and make sure you're being considered during that moment of decision. Um, because ultimately it does pay off, um, especially on Yelp, the vast majority, I'm talking 97% of people end up making a purchase after searching for a business on Yelp. So again, when you talk about conversion, it's like ton, millions of people coming to the platform looking for, for you, <laughs> but they just don't know they're looking for you. Um, that's your, your opportunity to get in front of them and, you know, make that cash transfer happen. Yeah. And we spend so much time thinking about website design, right? Let's make the website look as great as, as, as possible. Let's do all this stuff. And a lot of the small businesses spend a lot of money, creative design, building out the websites, um, but they don't spend the other time on, you know, the Yelp listing, <laughs> which is almost as critical, right? Because it's a, it's a microcosm of their larger website. It's an opportunity to, to get a first impression on people that are coming through search in a way that they just can't do with a website. So uh, that's really interesting. The other piece is uh, you guys have a, a unique phrase for this. Um, and I, I can't remember what it is right off the top of my head, but um, if it's, it's kind of large reach, but hyper-targeting, hyper-local, um, I, I'm probably getting it wrong, uh, but you have a lot of people, but you can get very granular with how you go about targeting those people, right? With geo-targeting, geo-fencing, the ad campaign. So you get the most, uh, the most targeting in the most granular type of, of, of arena. Can you talk a little bit more about the targeting that you guys have available on that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, probably what you're touching on is just, you know, the national scale, but with the hyper-local focus. Yeah. Um, because, you know, Yelp's mission has always been, how do we connect people with great local businesses? Um, and, you know, part of our targeting features are, you know, being able to, you know, serve up ads or get people connected to a business that's nearby um, because that's, you know, what they want. You know, even if traveling, they want to know the restaurant in their city or a service in their city or where they are. Um, so we have a lot of features that allow for location-based targeting, um, but we can also get, you know, green in terms of category or in terms of, you know, service offering, even if, you know, you're a business that's in, you know, uh, I don't know, window repair, but you, you don't do window installation. There are ways that we can make sure that you're only um, reaching the people and the audience that matters to you. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's so much information on Yelp. We can cut it in so many different ways in, um, in the way that's most relevant and most important to the business. That's a great transition because part of nuts and bolts is really about showing people that are coming in how to do this stuff, right? How, how to set this up. So Dan is the man with the plan and Dan is going to be walking us through kind of a, an example of how to set up your Yelp campaigns and give you guys kind of a first look at um, at how the platform works and, and what look what it looks like. Dan, thank you for joining us. I'm going to stop sharing here so you can. Uh, All right. Thanks, Kevin. Well, first, I want to uh, thank the team over at TabClicks and also DSG for uh, for help putting this together. I love the title, the nuts and bolts series. I'm definitely a nuts, nuts and bolts kind of guy. I like digging into the, uh, you know, to the granular side of things and seeing what we can do to find a solution. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. <clears throat> awesome. We can, can see we, that. Uh, can we all see this? Yep. All right. So the beauty of Yelp, like we were touching on before, is A, it's, um, it's specifically meant to be used to help people find local businesses. So Yelp, people don't go on Yelp to search for, for funny cat videos or to socialize or to talk about politics. Um, they're there to find a local business. So 
you know, right off the bat, a lot of the optimization is already done for us. But, you know, what we'll do, if you did want to start a ad campaign, you would log into uh, your Yelp for Business Owners account at biz.yelp.com. On the left-hand side, we would click on Yelp ads. And it's going to pretty much walk us through the entire, the entire flow in one shot. So we would click start another campaign. And then the first step would be to select a goal. So you can select a goal for your ad campaign, whether you want more phone calls or website clicks. If you have messaging enabled, you can request um, to have more um, action on your, your messages or your quote requests. We're always gonna wanna uh, tell it to let it self-optimize, right? So essentially what this is gonna do is this is gonna send out the best performing ad copy most often based off of empirical data, click-through rate, that kind of thing, right? So we would hit next, um, you can write custom ad text. Uh, essentially, you know, if you didn't, you would pull this from either the first 200 characters of a specialty section or a favorable review. We click next, um, we come Let to our- Let me just back up for, for one second yeah. on that. Um, do you have any, any kind of tips about you know, what best to put into the text part here? Are there things to avoid or are things to, to make sure that you highlight in here? And no, that's okay, but if this is, some people get here and they're like, oh, I've got to write something. What, what do I need to write here? Or the agency's like, what, what am I going to put in here yeah. that's going to resonate the best? Do you guys have? Yeah, so we found that the best performing ad copy looks organic, right? So mm -hmm. similar to our organic search results, that it doesn't look cheesy or, or um, you know, a, 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 if you do something with like all caps, you know, anything like that, um, we, we want it to be more of like a natural flow. So just talking about what the business specializes in, what separates you from the competition, that sort of thing, right? And again, this goes hand in hand with what you would put in the specialty section. There are other spots where you can highlight any kind of specials that the business is running or, or incentives that they're doing. Uh, but for ad copy, you want to focus on what separates you from the competition in terms of what that business actually does. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So next is our keyword section. Uh, so if if any of you all are familiar with how um, some of the other platforms like Google or Facebook work, uh, we're able to target specific queries, you know, search results on Yelp. Um, and we make it, again, pretty easy. So um, businesses are category based, right? So if you're an auto shop, or in this case, uh, our test business is a home services um, contractor category, you can negate which terms you don't want to show for. So these um, terms in blue are giving us examples of what searches this business could potentially show for in an ad. Um, so say that we don't do bathroom remodels, we would just X out of that and we would add that to our blocked keyword section. Same thing with uh, kitchen remodels. Say we don't do kitchen remodels or don't want our ad to show up for kitchen remodels, we would negate that and so on and so forth. If you don't see a term up here, no problem. You can add it down here. So say we wanted to add, um, let's say, you know, toilet repair. We would type in toilet repair and add it to that negative keyword section. Great. Right. So. Uh, all pretty easy, right? And then we would uh, continue on to our geo-targeting, which by default is going to be a radius targeting. So as we were talking about before, Yelp is a hyper-local platform. So we specialize in the, the local aspect of the, uh, the economy. So when users search on Yelp, you know, I think it's important to call out how we differ from say Google, for instance, is the user has to indicate an area that they want businesses to show for. So if they're looking for plumbers, they have to look for plumbers near Phoenix, Arizona, hmm. right? So they have to indicate in their search where they want the results for, which right off the bat eliminates a lot of the, of the geo-targeting that you have to do on most other platforms. So with our radius targeting by default, we can uh, adjust this slider for uh, you know, 25 miles down to, to five miles per, or 10 miles, however granular you want to get with it, right? Um, and because we do like finding solutions, if there are you know, additional uh, parameters that, that your business does need, we can, we can find a solution for, for further geo-targeting for the business. Great. Yep. So uh, continuing on one of the final steps is selecting the budget. 
So we have some uh, pre-selected options here. You have a uh, $540 per month maximum, $18 per day average, $840 per month maximum, a $1,500 per month maximum, and then a custom budget if none of those fit within what you're, you're looking to do. Um, they correspond to different pricing tiers for some of the enhanced profile features. So the enhanced profile features are uh, restriction of competitor ads on your listing, call action feature, slow uh, photo slideshow feature, et cetera. And you'll see that they correspond down here with the pricing. So say that we wanna go with a $1,500 um, per month package down here on the additional page upgrades. Um, the enhanced profile is gonna be included for free business highlights, license verification, portfolio and business logo, which are all enhancements made to help convert more users that visit your profile included for free. So say we, uh, we, we figure out our budget, we would click next. This is the billing section. This is where you would enter your credit card information. Uh, we do have um, promotional offers as well. So if you're eligible for a promotional offer, this is where you put it in. On the right-hand side here, you would have your, your totals. So it's gonna confirm you know, every, every charge that you receive can all be confirmed right here. And then if everything looks good, we click start advertising and that launches the campaign. Great, now does this go through a verification process before the campaign is actually live? Um, no, so okay. we, we do have checks for say, if you wanted to create a new listing. So, you know, we, we have a listings verification team that'll go and, and essentially like vet out uh, business eligibility for the site when creating a new listing. Uh, but for ads on a listing that's already approved, uh, this will go straight through. I know that face platforms like Facebook, for instance, were, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, needing to to verify um, and, and and approve ad campaign. But since again, people don't go on Yelp to discuss politics or or do anything really other than find a local business, um, the ads are, are pretty much set up instantaneously. That's great. It's always frustrating when you get to the end and you push go, and they're like great, we're reviewing your campaign. You're like, oh, now I'm just in a black hole of, of non-information. I have no idea when it's going to start. And right. it's, you know, always it's two in the morning and it starts and you're like, ah, oh, that's not when I wanted it to start. <laughs> right, right. So uh, so once everything's set up, um, you know, we, we were going through it before a lot of the targeting parameters are, are completed in the actual setup process. But you can uh, you can always adjust it here in your Yelp ads tab, right? So it's going to give you some of like basic reporting, and then down here, if if you know you wanted to change it and update it, you can update it all within this uh, TL ads tab. So all those parameters that we walked through earlier are uh, are all editable, you know, as the campaign progresses. And I, I hate to use the term "set it and forget it." Um, I don't think that that's a good strategy, but compared to most other platforms, again, with Yelp just being a place that's specifically used to find a local business. Um, a lot of that work is done for us and, and it's, it, it doesn't require all too much babysitting so to speak, but um, you can all you can update all of the, the targeting parameters as time goes on, right? And say that you're, you're getting too many requests for a certain um, service offering, you can add it to your negative keywords list or say that you're, you're not getting enough leads from a certain part of town and you wanted to increase your radius that as uh, as time goes on so um, exactly. in terms of reporting we report on all of the all of the, the the basic metrics right so um you'll be able to see how many customer leads your your ad campaign received and what we define as a customer lead is an action taken on yelp that indicates that they're either contacting the business directly from yelp or they're they've taken an additional step to to you know learn like go to the website um message business etc um, and there are some uh, more just, um, aggregate reporting metrics that you can pull through our platform. And I know that's also what you guys special in, specialize in. So um, I'll let you guys take it away from the, uh, from the reporting side of things. So I'll sure. stop sharing my screen here. Oh, that was a good demo and a good walkthrough. I really uh, appreciate it. And the interesting thing is, Whenever we think about a new platform for advertising on, the question's always, oh, well, how hard is, is the setup process? You know, what, what am I gonna need? And I think that was the, the critical piece, right? Um, of, of learning and understanding that 
it's not it's not scary to set up these campaigns. It's very straightforward, and uh, you know, it, it, you just you did an awesome walkthrough that you were pacing yourself as you were going through. But um, you know, it doesn't take that long to to get those things in place and to get it all set up. You you had a nice transition at the end for me for reporting. Um, obviously, Yelp has some great reporting in their system, uh, self serving right, and and getting that out there. Tap clicks obviously uh, is known for their analytics and reporting is one of the key pieces of our marketing operations platform. Um, Mike, one of the things we talked about before is from an agency perspective, adding one more distribution source to an existing list of campaigns for your clients. One of the concerns is, okay, now I've got one more thing I need to report on and one more thing I need to get out to the client. So it's, it's a lot of, of concern on the agency side. Can you talk a little bit about how you're kind of leveraging tap clicks to consolidate some of that visualization or reporting to your clients? Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, you know, DSG is a, is you know uh, just a, a quick note about DSG. We are uh, an agency that specializes in in small to medium sized businesses and crafting hyper local digital marketing solutions for them. Um, then we also uh, operated in, in a role as a consultant for some larger uh, medium-sized businesses and then some enterprise level businesses as well. So we really depend on partners like TapClicks, like, like Yelp, um, and the teams that you guys have and, and the support that you give us to really dig in and, and, and craft the right solution. So, um, you know, Kevin, I, 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 everybody that's probably on the call has, has struggled with this at some point and, and uh, tap clicks is really the, the perfect solution for combining channels. And like I said, I think in my earlier statement, which is, you know, we're talking about digital transformation. This is something that the clients are open to. They're having these conversations internally. It's an absolute perfect time to, to bring this up. How can we pull all your data together? So, um, you know, as, as Dan mentioned, there's great reporting if you're running it on a small, um, you know, maybe one campaign basis. As you need to scale up, it's absolutely crucial that you put things together, save yourself the time, save your clients the time, uh, put everything in one dashboard, which which Tapless is is unbelievable at. I think you guys are are you know uh, have have nailed the combining data sources. Uh, it's one of the massive strong points of the platform. And you can easily uh, put together kind of a mixed channel report that runs uh, updates daily. Um, you know, Dan's, Dan's team, the data gets the ingested um, and you can look at it against other channels, other current channels, uh, you know, whether it's organic, like we were talking about, whether it's, um, you know, paid search or something like that, Google. Uh, it's a really great opportunity to look in, really say, okay, are we, are we doing the right thing? Are we spending the smart dollars? Um, and we, we've we been able to do it at scale really um, using Tapflex. It's it's a very easy add-on. Great, we'd love to hear that. And I think that's one of the interesting things is people are looking at new and different ways of advertising and getting their message out there. Agencies are looking at new and different ways of communicating those results back to their clients, consolidating the information, doing more with less, right? These are all buzzwords that, that we're addressing and trying to to take care of in the new normal that we're working in. So more with less means better consolidated reporting, better visibility, better decision, data-driven decisions in small businesses where that's typically not necessarily been one of the core key components of their optimization. They, they want reach, they want more reach. And now we're seeing trends from the large, large businesses that do a lot of data aggregation make its way down to the small businesses and they're being able to leverage some of those um, analytics as well. So that's, uh, that's really interesting um, to hear. And Kevin, if I could just one, one quick question, I mean, one quick point I want to make, um, you know, in our capacity for, for work, or working as, as a consultant with larger businesses, we partner with a ton of agencies who all seem to have the same issue, which is we waste a ton of time pulling spreadsheets, merging spreadsheets, figuring out how we can get reporting and passing it back to uh, to the business to figure out whether it worked or not, right? The, the match back. Um, that's a very, very strong point um, for tap clicks. You know, we, I, I've seen whether it's Salesforce or some of the other platforms that are that are capturing lead data 
and then you know doing the attribution it very easily gets back into the the kind of daily reporting when it's available so um, kind of think of that 360 model. It's it's a very uh, um, easy platform to to jump into. Great, great. I did have a question that related, and this is uh, maybe more specific to an individual use case. Um, but somebody asked, how are we addressing data from clients that don't have reviews yet? Um, so we're still able to pull in all of the ad campaign data in there. Um, I'm not exactly. Maybe you can kind of clarify a little bit more in the chat um, what the question was. Um, are you trying to see reviews in reporting or um, are reviews blocking the reporting for coming in? Um, if you can message that in the chat, but. Um, oh, okay. Let's, uh, so the question is, if they don't have reviews, it's not bringing in the campaign ad data. Let's take that one offline. If you could uh, put your email in there, we will have uh, somebody reach back out and try to address that specific uh, use case scenario um, in there. If anybody else um, is on, have other, uh, additional questions about how to set up the campaigns, I think it was kind of really fun to walk through Dan's thing and give us the visibility into kind of uh, what's going on there and, and how it is easy to set up those campaigns. You know, small businesses are looking for any advantage that they can get adding Yelp to that list of campaign uh, locations, I think is the critical step. Um, and there's a lot that goes into it, right? Not only just making sure that you have the right data um, in your Yelp listing, but then making sure you set up the campaigns properly and pull that all the way through to the end. And getting that, getting that data back to the customers, making sure that they're able to understand the benefits and values of the different channels um, as an agency that you're putting out there for them, and then be able to optimize between all of them at a glance, right? You're gonna be able to see everything that you're working on and what's working, what's not working. The other thing, Mike, is uh, multi-touch point attribution. It's a very long kind of word phrase and it's scary to a lot of people. Um, but on the small side with multiple different campaigns you're running, can you talk about how um, small businesses may be more open to that kind of terminology now as they're doing digital transformations. Right, and and I mean, it's a great point, Kevin. I touched on it a little bit, but you know, kind of the, the traditional way of doing it or the easy way of doing it is let's not set up any conversion tracking, let's not do that. Um, let's just go and we'll, we'll kind of suss out on the back end whether we saw a boost in business or, or how it worked kind of in the bottom line. Um, with a with a platform like TabClicks and the and the data that's coming from Yelp, I mean, Dan, you did a great job showing you know what are we actually trying to accomplish with with this campaign, right? Are we going to drive traffic to the website, or what? What are the goals? You can very easily from the beginning, and I think this is a massively important step, especially now. Um, you set up that goal conversion tracking, and you can understand very quickly, right? Uh, you know, whether this is performing, whether you got a click to the request a quote button, right? Something, something as basic as that. Um, again, if we're expanded out the channels, can you uh, use kind of simple, uh, you know, standard tracking metrics to, to attribute paid search or something like that on your other channels? So you can start to look at these very quickly, very easily um, with setup that, you know, a, a, an, an agency can provide um, as part of their standard process, and you can start evaluating that immediately, right? Okay, did this thing actually get through? Did we actually get a sale out of this? I mean, I think that's the question that that everybody's really asking. Um, and as this information about, you know, how do you make yourself more digital? How do you make yourself more, uh, you know, thrifty in this time? Uh, that's that's going to be on the tip of the tongue. Is this actually working? Well, this gives you a way to to start doing that almost immediately after launching the campaign. I think it's really important to keep in mind and, and ask those questions for the for the client. Perfect. Perfect. Great. If you guys have additional questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat um, and we will we will try to address those. Um, and as we begin to wrap up here, uh, Christina, I think Yelp has a special promo. Why don't you can you give us a quick rundown of what that looks like? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know there are a lot of agencies on the call today who are already engaged with and familiar with TapClicks. 
Um, but we also wanted to make sure that you knew that Yelp also has a dedicated team that works specifically with marketing and advertising agencies, just like yours to bring, you know, all the great solutions we talked about today um, to you and to your clients. Um, so as you've heard, you know, my fellow panelists, Mike today from DSG is one of our valued partners. So he definitely knows all of this. Um, but becoming an official Yelp advertising partner is, you know, a great opportunity to get the inside scoop into what's happening at Yelp and getting access to experts who are there to help and support your company and your clients, however they can. Um, we also offer, you know, partner exclusive promotions and reward structures, um, in addition to a whole host of other agency benefits. Um, and right now we're actually offering for, you know, any qualified agencies here today who, you know, just have a quick conversation with their team and end up joining our program. Um, you'll get 10% commission during your first six months of being a partner. So oh, we're really cool. excited. Yeah. To offer that, um, up to the group today. Um, so if you're interested in joining, you know, feel free to contact me directly. I'll offer up you know, my email is cng at yelp.com, or I know Tapclix is going to be sending some additional materials after the webinar today too. So there are other ways to get in touch. Sure. That's exciting. Dan, we had a question that came in about, um, multi-location advertising. So if you have a chain or you have, you know, multiple different stores, is there an easy way to set that up? Or do you have to set up campaigns specific to each location? Uh, individual uh, campaign launches, yeah. So um, again, we're we're all about finding solutions. So if there were like a you know large multi-location chain that um, we had all the parameters figured out, again, that's that's something that you'd work with uh, with with us with, and, and we'd love to find a solution to make that as easy as possible. But through the dashboard, it's it's one location at a time. Okay, so they can work with some somebody on the customer service side to figure out. Absolutely. Chain yep. environment. And yeah. Kevin, just really quick, I, I put a plug in for, for Dan's team and the partner team at, at, at Yelp. We do quite a bit of that and uh, and it's it's very smooth every time. You guys are fantastic and um, it, it really worked out and we're able to communicate very easily um, and get these things off the ground, you know, as, as quickly as we would a, a single location business. So it's really valuable. Fantastic. Appreciate that. Those are the questions. That's our quick walkthrough of the nuts and bolts of Yelp. We really appreciate everybody coming on and asking questions and being engaged with this. Uh, uh, Christina and Dan, thanks so much for giving us the Yelp insight. Mike, really appreciated the, the additional insight from the agency perspective and from the brand perspective. And we wish everybody the best of luck in kind of reevaluating things for small businesses as they move forward. We'll have all the follow-ups and email to go out to everybody. So if you do have questions that weren't answered on this, feel free to reach back out to us via email um, on the follow-ups. But thanks so much for everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next time. Talk to y'all soon. All right.